The way we do updates in ClickHouse has just got a whole lot easier. Let's launch ClickHouse so we can see what's changed. We're going to be working with the UK price paid data set, which contains addresses and price data for properties sold in the UK. And you can see the create table statement here. We need to make sure that we have the settings enable block number column equals one and enable block offset column equals one. Data in ClickHouse is stored in parts and we can use the underscore part virtual column to return the part for each row. So in this query here, we're querying the UK price pay table and seeing how many records there are in each part. And you'll notice that all the records are in the same part. So all underscore one, underscore 29, underscore two, and it's got 30 million rows. We can also query the system.parts table and you get back more or less the same data. So you can see we've got the all underscore one, underscore 29, underscore two, we've got the 30 million rows. And then it tells us the last time that this part was modified. Now let's say we find this recent sale in Harrogate in Yorkshire in the UK. And let's say the price was entered in incorrectly and we want to update it. And so we do this with this query that uses the normal SQL update syntax. So we see we've got update UK price paid, set price equals uh, 205,000. And then we say the postcode, the postcode two, and then the date. And that runs and it's all fine. If we rerun our select query, we can see that the price has been updated straight away. We can also update multiple rows in one query. So this query here increases the price by 10% for all the properties in a town near Birmingham. So what's going on under the hood? Let's rerun our parts query. And you see, we still have our initial part at the top, but we also have two parts with a patch prefix. Patch parts are deltas that are applied to normal parts at query time. So rather than having all the data for each row, they only contain the data for columns and rows that have been changed. ClickHouse knows where to apply the delta because the patch file also contains the underlying part and the part offset for each row. We can see what data is being stored in each part file by querying the part columns system table. And you see it comes back in, in the first place, we've got the normal part and you see that's got all the columns. We've got price, we've got date, we've got postcode one, postcode two, and so on and 30 million rows. Then we come down, we've got our first patch parts. That was for our first update. And you notice it only contains one row and it's got the price and then it's got all those different virtual columns. And then finally, we've got our second patch part. Again, it only has the price and then a load of virtual columns and it's got eight rows because we updated eight rows. And these patch parts will eventually be merged with the normal parts in the usual background merge process. But if we want them to merge right away, we can use the optimize table command to do that. We're using final to force the merge even for small part files and alter sync equals two to have the client block until the merge is done. We can then rerun our query against the parts underscore columns system table. And you can see now we're back to just a single part. So all underscore one underscore 29 underscore three underscore 32 and it's got all the columns and it's then got the 30 million rows. So you might be now wondering, when should we not use this approach to updating data? So my colleague Tom has done some benchmarking comparing this way of updating data and the alter table syntax that rewrites the entire part file in order to update it. And what he concluded is that this way of updating, so using the update syntax, is better for frequent small changes. So it's roughly around 10% of a table. But if you're doing large updates, this might not be the best choice because first of all, it must be applied in memory on every query until those patch parts are merged and it's adding a CPU and RAM overhead before materialization of the result. And so for those large changes, it's often better to use the alter table syntax, which runs a classic mutation or rewrite of the whole part under the covers. You'll have to wait longer once until that update to rewrite the part has happened, but you'll then have a better baseline query performance afterwards. If you're interested in more ClickHouse features, you'll want to check out this playlist next.